Hi, my name is Cassie and this is Dose of DIY. So my channel is dedicated to figuring out how to do things yourself and stop overpaying other people. And one of the things I spent a lot of money on was getting my nails done. So this is gonna be showing you how I did this French manicure at home. So one of the first and most important steps is prepping your nails. And when I first started doing my nails at home, I would skip this step and then they wouldn't like stay on that well. And then I found out, oh, it's cause I was skipping this step. So I actually have a whole separate video dedicated to how to prep your nails. This nail prep method would apply for gel or no chip manicures, as well as poly gel nails and gel X nails and dip nails, as well as acrylic nails. So if you do not know how to prep your nails, I definitely recommend checking that out. So to get this look, it's kind of a combination of Gelux nails as well as No Chip to get that French manicure look. For this one, I did do an off-brand version of those Gelux tips. I do have a whole separate video dedicated to how to do Gelux tips, but basically they are a softer gel tip that you use this like gel extend to attach it to your nails. Uh, those tips are a little bit more expensive, so I've been trying to do it with some off-brand versions like this. So the first step is figuring out the right sizes for your nails. So you want it to not feel like that arch is like too tight and you wanna see if it goes all the way to the sides of both of your nails. This shape is a little bit trickier since these are coffin shapes. So as you can see, when you put it up against your nail, you can kind of see the nails on the sides there and obviously that makes it look unprofessional. So what I did is I cut off and I angled the nails off on the sides and that way when you put it back on, you aren't able to see that and now it gives it a much more professional look. So the next step is attaching the nails. I did use my Apre Gelux kit. So the first step is putting on this pH bonder and then you're putting on this primer onto your nails. They do have off-brand versions of this kit as well and I haven't tried them yet, but as soon as I do try it, I will let you guys know if they work well or not. But this next part is putting this extend gel on your nail buds. So you are first attaching it onto your nail beds and then you're gonna cure it. And then you're gonna put it on the nails themselves and then cure it again, attaching it to your nail. So I think the main things that I hit on in the other video is that you wanna make sure you put a lot in, but you don't wanna put too much on that nail, otherwise it's gonna spill out all over. If it does spill out, that is okay. Um, I'll show you in a moment how to try to like get that off. I use these like clips to help keep it on so it doesn't move. Otherwise, as soon as you think it's on, it could like shift a little bit. You could end up with a nail that's completely like sideways or something like that. But you can again, see my other video if you want more details, but I was trying to show an example here of where if you do put too much and it comes over, like I use these scissors that I use during my nail prep to get off that stuff. So you don't have to like live with it. You can just like try to like cut it off like I just did there. Obviously the goal is to try to wipe it all off before you cure it. But if you do notice it after you cure it, then you can use the scissors to try to get it off. This was their medium length, but I was like looking at it, trying to assess if this was a good length or if I wanted it to be any shorter. And I decided that that was gonna be pretty hard to type with. So I wanted to like cut it off. So I have these clippers that I use and I'll link them in the description below. And then I file it off to make sure it's like smooth. Cause after you clip it, you're gonna have the like sharp edges. So obviously you wanna like smooth it down like a little bit without ruining that coffin shape. Now that I have the nails attached and the length that I want, I'm actually putting this base coat on top. And I know that that sounds kind of strange, but because I'm gonna be painting that white part on top, I need to put that base coat on so that it can stick to it. And I'll be showing you two methods to get that French manicure look. So this first one is you use this like stamp and you put that white gel nail polish on top of it. And then you just like kind of push it down on your nail. Then I use isopropyl alcohol and a brush to shape it. So in this instance, I'm trying to make it have like that curved shape to give it that like French manicure look. One of my favorite things about gel nail polish is that if you mess up, you can just like wipe it off and start over. So if you use isopropyl alcohol, you can easily take it off without disturbing that base coat. So you want to use isopropyl alcohol, not acetone. If you use acetone, that would also remove the base coat. And so this is the second method where you paint it on normally. And then I'm doing that same thing where I'm using that brush and the isopropyl alcohol to like then shape it. You want to be careful. You don't want to have like too much on there. So you can see like I keep like dabbing it on the paper towel. So you want it to be wet so that it can help like remove that gel nail polish, but you don't want it to be too wet because if it's too wet, then it's going to kind of be more like watercolor paint where it just kind of like spreads and that's not what you want because you're not going to get like a nice clean line. Once you get the shape that you like, then you can cure it. And then I do a second coat. And then once you get that shape that you like again, then you can cure it as well. And then I put a top coat on the very top of it to make it stay. I'll link the brand that I use in the description below, but I find that this is a great no wipe top coat. So that means that it's not gonna have that like sticky layer after you put it on. 
And if you don't know what I mean when I say sticky layer, so if you do a gel or no chip nail polish manicure at home, when you put on that base coat and you cure it, it still feels sticky. So when I first did it, I was really confused by that. I was like, I thought as soon as you put it under that lamp, it's supposed to be smooth and dry. And I didn't understand why it was still sticky. And no matter how many times I put it under that lamp, it was still sticky. And it's intensely like that so that it can stick to like the layers on top of it. So that's where it should stay sticky until you put that final top coat on. So because it does stay sticky between layers, you have a choice here, right? Some people do it one finger at a time. So if you live in like a chaotic household with a, like a bunch of kids and pets and stuff, it might be better to do it one finger at a time because otherwise you can get like dust or hair stuck to it when it still has that techy layer. So instead of putting the white on all at the same time, you could do one finger at a time, make sure you get the shape you like, cure it, and then do your second coat and then put the top coat on. And then that finger would be completely done. Versus like for me, what I was doing here is because I live by myself, which is two cats that were nowhere near it. I did the method where you do it all at the same time. So for like those four fingers, I put like all of it on and then I used the brush with the isopropyl alcohol to shape it and then I would cure it. But that was just because that worked for me in my specific scenario. But even when I do the all the fingers at the same time method, I still do the four fingers and my thumb separately because with such a small lamp, it is hard to like cure the fingers as well as your thumb at the same time. So I find that it's a lot easier if I do them separately. And that's it. So this is what the final look is. Hopefully you found this helpful. Please leave a comment if you think I left anything out or if there's anything that I'm missing in these tutorials. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.